Let me introduce you <coughs> to Robert Way. He comes from Oxford University Press, who has kindly agreed, I think you all know that, Oxford University Press has kindly agreed to you uh, publish the proceedings of this uh, conference. And the, he is going to present uh, the use of technology in publishing. Uh, he is going to present, I think, several products from Oxford University Press which can be used for the purposes uh, of this of we have been discussing all throughout the conference, which is using technology for teaching and language, uh, for teaching and learning languages. So, um, more facts about Robert. Um, he is a program manager and digital project product specialist in Oxford University Press and he has been devoted to technology supply to language teaching and learning for quite a long time. Uh, he knew what uh, floppy disk were and he was already doing uh, applying he was already applying technologies to language teaching and learning and he has written uh, or has been involved in the development of several textbooks from Oxford University Press, I think. And, well, I think you already can see that he's an expert in this area, so uh, let, us, let us listen to his presentation. But first of all, I wanted to give, just sorry for that, uh, some instructions about what, what is coming next. Uh, you know that there is an E-rate on the walls of Avila, afterwards, which is starting at half past seven. So the meeting point for this uh, E-rate is the access to the walls, which uh, are, or oh, the name in Spanish is Puerta Arco de la Catedral, the cathedral door. And the name of the establishment, which is there, which is actually the information point, the tourist information point, is Casa de las Carniterias. So, we should be there at half past seven, a quarter of an hour for Laurens, which has those of you who cannot be punctually there. And afterwards, at nine o'clock, we will have a gala dinner at Restaurante Alcarabé, which is in La Plaza de la Catedral, the Cathedral Square. So it is opposite to the Cathedral, I think, and it is Restaurant de la It is at 9 o'clock, and only those who have already paid for this should attend this guide, because it was separately paid, as you know. So sorry for the delay. Thank you very much. Okay, first thing we'll start off with. Um, it's a short text. Can you just read this at the back there? No, seriously, if you would like to come forward, then I invite you to do so so you can see. It's quite a small screen, and you might have a few problems seeing. So if anybody in the back would like to come slightly more forward, and then maybe I can stop using the microphone as well, so you can hear me in my natural voice. It's all part of um, classroom management, of course. Okay, if I don't use a microphone, can you still hear me? Yeah? Okay. Not such a big distance. Okay. I believe if you get married, um, you can take some eggs to Santa Clara to stop it raining. If there's anything you can do to stop the technology going wrong, I need that as well today, because I'm going to be swapping between my computer and the iPad. So, fingers crossed, if anything goes wrong, okay? So, firstly I'd like to introduce to you a little bit about Oxford University Press. And the thing today is not a commercial presentation. The idea, just give you an idea of some of the challenges that we're facing uh, with technology, uh, because it's increasing you know, at a tremendous pace, and we're struggling as a publisher to keep up because we're not, um, you know, we're not a, a digital company. 
You know, we're, we're not Microsoft, we're not Apple. You know, so we've got a very traditional past. For, for example, um, Oxford University Press started you know, in 1586, so uh, 430 years ago, and we've been printing on paper ever since. So only in the recent years have we had this digital challenge. Okay. Obviously, printing started off um, with this fashion. Um, in fact, using wine presses to press the grapes, the same technology was used by Gutenberg to produce the first texts. And that is something you know, that has been used until very, very recently. Okay. Now, tablets are new, they've been used <laughs> for many years, and in fact, more or less, when do you think this photo is from? 400 years ago? 200 years ago? Maybe 60 or 70 years ago? Yeah, I mean, this, still in the 1950s, this type of tablet was being used, until we moved on to the new technology, which was using maybe paper, textbooks, you know, with chalkboards. So a lot of things have changed very rapidly in a very short time. You know? And in fact, just going back you know, 10 years, you know, in the classroom, there was very little technology going on, you know, and there was nothing of tablets, of course. Most people laughed at Steve Jobs when he presented his iPad, you know, the, the big iPhone. Uh, and so it's remarkable to see the changes taking place in the classroom today. For example, when I was at school, this is what I was using. Okay. Anybody recognize that? Now, this is called a BBC Micro, which was a computer that had a capacity of 32K, which is smaller than most photos today. Um, this is what's happening today in the classroom, and you see a lot of use of tablets, which has increased in the past two or three years. The amazing thing, really, if I think back, and things that have been said today, is they're a great tool, not just for the sake of having technology, but you can see here there's real collaboration. Um, there's a few schools that I've witnessed in the UK as well that have implemented the use of tablets, uh, and you can see children sitting on the floor, working in corridors, so it's totally changed the way students are working and they're working together, doing group work. So that's a big change you know, from Victorian times when you're just sitting at your table. And in fact, if I remember, probably more due to the fact there wasn't enough money for more computers, but we used to share computers as well. So a lot of the work we did was as a, as a team. And even in schools where they have individual iPads, they're constantly looking at each other's work and sharing work. So that's you know, a positive area within technology. Because what we do have to be aware of sometimes is that some people take on technology in schools just for the sake of it. Or they do it because they, they need more students. Because they have to compete against other schools. But they don't really know what they want. So you have to have a clear idea why you want to use technology and what benefit that will give to your schools, for example. Now, it's very simple. Um, the market is very clear with what it wants. It's very easy for us as publishers to produce stuff. I'm being um, sarcastic, of course, because the market is totally fragmented. It's fragmented because a lot of the digital advancements don't come through a natural evolution, but come through uh, projects through um, local governments. In Spain, for example. You know? So each government as well as having its own curriculum, now with the LOMFE, every single state will have its own version of the LOMFE. They also have their own bilingual projects, and they all have their own <coughs> digital projects. Now, a lot of these projects are in place, again, not to improve education necessarily, but to win votes. You agree with me? Yeah. So, some of them don't necessarily make sense are not necessarily beneficial to students. I remember in Galicia, for example, they have a project called Abela, which was 100% online. Not just 100% digital, but 100% online. Now that's a strange project for uh, an area that's full of mountains and valleys. 
because only about 50% of schools could possibly have internet connection. So it's a bit, it's a bit difficult at times, you know. And the schools are asking us for our books in pen drives, you know, and, and in reality they weren't allowed to have that because it had to be supplied by the central server in the Shunta de Galicia. So again, we were faced, you know, all the publishers were faced with that dilemma. And again, we don't want, as a publisher, to give our contents you know, in digital format because they're very dangerous. You know, if we give a book in a digital format, you know, we, we lose it. We don't sell anything well, basically. Yeah? So on one hand, for a publisher, you know, it's very dangerous, like the music industry, you know, the, the sort of um, um, video industries, you know, with films and, and movies. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's a great threat because you can distribute freely digital media very easily. You know? So we have to protect that as well, obviously. Um, other areas just have to be 100% digital. Other areas, and even within areas, there are differences, of course, because some schools decide to take on their own projects. Some are not state-run. Some are because there are private schools that are competing against other private schools. Some are state schools, all got different funding. They haven't all got a very good connection in the schools for internet. Some have got a good connection. What is very clear, it's impossible to have all the students in a school connecting at the same time. Because there is no connection on this other good enough for that. You know, it would cost millions and millions to set up that. So really, very quickly, um, schools realised that they needed um, offline content as well. They needed to work on and offline. So that became sort of a blended need, blended learning. Okay, so that's a, Probably the stage we're at at the moment. So there's a blended requirement. Um, again, what are the students using? Some of them are using netbooks. In Andalusia, for example, Budak gave away lots of netbooks, um, which are all broken now, by the way. Um, and so we had to provide content for that. For example, in my company, um, the cost per head for digital support is 1,000 euros a year. So I cost my company 1,000 euros a year just in digital support. That money was not in place within the education. So very quickly, anything that broke just stayed there. You visit schools, they've got their interactive whiteboard in the corner and never been set up because there was no money for a technician to, to set up the board. Or if anything breaks, they phone and nobody comes. So those are some of the problems you can have when we jump into technology too quickly. Some people are now using tablets, but again, there's a big difference between an iPad and an Android tablet. So what do we produce content for? But there are also other ones. There are also Blackberry tablets, or Windows tablets, there are many different types of tablets. Cloud computing, again, you know, it's another way of sharing resources. So that's another demand from schools that maybe we have to um, supply materials for. Um, mobile learning, again, it's another phenomenon in the classroom, and some schools are demanding some sort of mobile applications to be able to either do collaborative work you know, as a classroom, or maybe apps for vocab or for dictionaries, etc. Again, the operating system that's, that schools are using. You know, and most schools these days will be using um, Linux or a, a version of Linux, so there are lots of different versions as well. And all the different programs we create have to be different for each version. So it's a little bit complicated. Um, some are using Windows, obviously. Servers. Some uh, communities have to have all the content supplied through a state server, and some through school servers. So they're looking for materials for that server, and they can't actually install anything on the computers that belong within that server. So another complication. They want interactivity in books, so obviously that's a good thing, I think, because at the beginning, the first digital materials are just basically a PDF, you know, and then that sort of <coughs> converted into a PDF, maybe with some audio. But really, does that enhance learning and experience? Because again, back to that initial question, um, there is no point really in going digital unless it's beneficial, you know? beneficial to the education of your students. Now, if you increase collaboration, good, but a PDF is not going to increase collaboration. You know? And in fact, I personally prefer, and I'm very digital, I personally prefer paper than a PDF you know, for learning in a textbook. So, for me, that is not an improvement. You know? 
Um, and then again, there's needs for, for the classroom. So the classroom, they need um, tools you know, for presenting contents, which is normally on our interactive whiteboard. But then again, we can't produce materials for interactive whiteboards or that, that are necessary because not all schools have them. So some schools have them, some schools don't, some schools have a projector, some schools share computers. So there's also lots of different scenarios going on within the classroom as well. So it's a little bit difficult for us sometimes. Before, it was simple, a piece of paper. So we printed our paper, gave out the books, and everybody was happy. So these days, things have got complicated for us. And for teachers, of course, because you have the same, same scenario. Right, as far as interactive whiteboards are concerned, well, we produced some materials like this. What um, teachers mainly wanted was a book on screen. So basically, they wanted the same book the student had, but up on the screen as a presentation tool. Okay. And then the next step after that is to say, okay, I know, what's the benefit of that? Well, it's big, because in the olden days, um, with classroom management, you know, to, to get heads up, you know, it was quite difficult because if I've just got a, a book like this, the same as your book, and I'm showing things, you know, it's, it's, you can't really see what I'm showing you. So this enabled me to make it a lot bigger for a start. And again, I could get your attention. If I'm saying, look at page 38 and you're looking down, I really don't know what you're doing. I hope you're looking at page 38, but you might be doing something else. But if, if I say, look here, and we're doing things... You know, the teacher-centered learning, then I know I've got control of the classroom, and I know you're paying attention. If you're looking down, I know you're not concentrating. So that en enables us then to improve classroom management. And then later on, we move to other activities which could be you know, sort of student focus, either pair work, group work, or individually. So that you need to allow both as well. Obviously, you need creation, you need production from the students. But as a presentation tool, it's perfect. Just to give you a quick idea of what they look like. Got these links always crossed. Um, and here, for example, just a sample. And what we get here is a page, okay, with embedded sort of answer keys as well, which is that allows us to speed things up. Okay. Another thing that was a bit of a waste of time in a classroom was just writing on the you know, on the blackboard because while I'm writing, the, the clock is ticking, so I'm not using you know, the time properly. Uh, and also, if we're getting students to copy stuff, again, that's another waste of time. So this enables us to actually increase the speed of a classroom, get more content done, and make more time for practice. Okay? So that's another benefit of using these tools. I'm sure this is old technology now for most of us. Five years ago, everybody was trembling about the use of these in a classroom. We would do talks in schools, and teachers oh, I don't want to use that. And these days, most teachers use it perfectly. So just in five years, it's been a huge change. Okay. I'm just showing you a few of the benefits. Okay. Also, it enables you to put in the videos. Okay. So I don't have to carry I don't need a DVD and a television and CDs and uh, the, the cassette recorder and the cassette. And, no, I've got all my resources in one place. There's no way I ever do that. How come? So, did you want to put the list? And it also enables me, for example, our latest versions, to show subtitles if you want, to get rid of them, even have a tape script, and click on it, and go back to that section, jump to that section. So these are sort of things that they can allow us to do very quickly, very easily. Okay. Just give you an idea. Can I make a question right now? Sure, yeah. Uh, you showed an exercise. Is it visible? Can actually the, the student write over there his, his uh, answers to the exercise? On, on this one, it's actually just a presentation tool. So this is just for interactive whiteboards. But I'll show you later the actual student material mm -hmm. where it's interactive as well, okay? okay. So I want, I'll try to not make it commercial. I'm not trying to sell any books here, but just to show you the ideas of what's available, okay? Mm -hmm. This is our latest one, just to show you, just to give you an idea where we're going. Um, this is a primary one, so we're changing the look. So not so sterile, and it's actually more student-focused, more student-designed, so the look and feel is changing. Okay? So we go into this one, 
And again, what we've changed a lot here is really our focus on, on the educational systems. So rather than thinking, right, I've got the book that you've got, and now I'm going to decide, okay, let's just go through the book, and now and again I'm going to put on the answers, and I've got a mixed activity. Really what we're thinking here, well, this, the sort of teaching with an interactive whiteboard should be integrated into the, the whole you know, sort of um, classroom management, and, and um, we need to really think about what, the, what steps are involved using the interactive whiteboard. So here you can see we're going from just having a class book with the embedded codes to actually setting up the stages. So we're starting off with presentation. So we're taking advantage of the tool um, to actually create maximum impact. So here, so when we're presenting, presenting vocab, that's the first thing we're going to start before we even open any books. So it really is heads up time. Yeah? So you don't have to spend time correcting the answers because all the sort of yes, no 
answers or multiple choice answers can be corrected. As long as they're not productive, like writing or, or speaking, they can be corrected automatically. So it's another, another benefit and gives more time to the teacher, of course. Okay. But blended, well, what we need to do is get that webbook, but also allow it to be used offline. So that's what we do in something we call Oxford Plus. Now, it's a, it's a program. Well, it's, a pro it's going to be a program because it's launched this September, but it's, it's ready now um, in, my, in our offices. <laughs> but it's going to be in the market in, in September, and it allows you to use those web books offline. And to synchronize the grade book, you need to connect. Obviously, there needs to be some sort of, sort of connection, but when you work with the books totally offline, not only in computers and PCs, in Windows, um, Linux, example, but also on tablets. So you can use them on Android tablets or, or Apple tablet, iPads, basically. Uh, and then you just synchronize with your connection. So that's another way that we can actually provide a solution to this connectivity problem that exists in most schools and most environments. Just give you an idea what that looks like. allows me to download my content and it's actually downloaded onto my um, hard drive and that, then I can delete it afterwards and so it allows me to connect from anywhere, download from any online place onto any computer I have so I can have it both on my iPad and also on my PC for example there it is. So this is totally offline. So it's the same thing as we saw before, but now it's offline. Same thing, activities. Okay. And you see here, with a Wi-Fi connection, if I'm connected, it lets me know, so I can actually synchronize all the results. Again, for blended, what we try to do as well is offer other sorts of content. So for a traditional course, uh, for example, English file, um, I'm sure you've heard of. Um, we offer, for example, a separate skills program to enable uh, schools or institutes to do both paperwork in the classroom, but also have a, an online content as well. So it's, it's, it's sort of a, a lighter version. So it's not like a whole book uh, digital. It would be mainly paper, but with a slight digital extra. So this would be using our own um, LMS within Oxford um, University Press called Oxford Learn uh, and it has its own grade books and its own system but it allows teachers also to add content to it so you can actually create debates and upload your own documents as well so that's another, another thing that we're doing to enable sort of blended learning which I think is probably the way, way to go but the cloud situation and uh, what we provide um, is all the resources that we saw before. Before I talked about the advantages of the interactive whiteboard material, the fact that the teacher has, because it has, has everything, it doesn't just have the audio and the videos, but it also has all the flashcards, all the posters, has everything. So the teacher can walk into the class, you know, relaxed rather than carrying all the stuff. Um, but also, all those same resources, it's not just in, in the CD, we also have them you know, in, the, uh, in the cloud. Yeah. So, teachers, for example, from anywhere, from, from the beach, you know, God forbid, um, from the homes, preparing, can get access to absolutely everything. All their tests, all the exams, all the, the actual books themselves, even the interactive whiteboard material, absolutely everything is also in the cloud for them, for instant access. things for, for all of them. So you have to make a decision. 
So you just have to decide which are the most used. Maybe a couple of years ago, BlackBerry was quite popular. Now, not so much. So our first apps were sort of BlackBerry, um, Android, and also uh, um, iOS for, for iPhones. Now we're sort of not really looking at BlackBerry at all. But for example, one of our most popular apps, which is the Oxford Advanced Learner's Dictionary, um, is available for iPhones, iPads, Android, Mac OS, Windows Phone, Windows 8, BlackBerry, and Kindle Fire, for example. You, you can do something like that with such a huge product. But other things that are not so big, we probably have to reduce just to, to iPads and Android tablets, for example. Again, it's quite high. It's not just it's not just a matter of changing you know, the code slightly. This is like total new programming. You have to do programming from scratch for each of the different um, operating systems, also for the different sizes. If you've got something for an iPhone, you, know, you have to rewrite it for an iPad, you know, unless you just want you know, the same format, which is pretty ugly. But if you're going to rewrite it to take advantage of that format, it's a lot of work, basically. To give you an idea. That is the format of an iPhone dictionary. So you can actually click and open up the activities and you'd have the images, for example, in a certain section like that. If you're in an iPad, it's totally different. So you're actually reorganizing everything. So you're thinking from scratch. So you're not just saying, well, I'm going to convert that to a different format. You're just thinking, what would be the advantages of that size of 10 inches or 10.1 inches rather than you know, a small phone? and they're taking advantage of that size difference. So it's quite complicated. And again, having extras that can only have at that size. So those are some of the things. And again, when you tilt you know, the iPad, it changes format, so you have to allow for that as well. So it's a lot, it's a lot goes into it. And what we're doing at the moment, really, for tablets, is uh, sort of created something called the Oxford Learners Bookshelf, which is a really great um, app even if I say so myself, uh, and it really takes advantage of learning. So you know, for us, as a publisher, it's quite nice to present this to schools compared to what we had maybe two years ago. So when I go back to saying it really has to be advantageous, it has to be better than paper, I really think this is better than paper. You know, to give you an idea, um, it's a bit, it works a bit like the iBooks from, you know, from Apple Store. You've got a bookshelf, you get your textbooks, or your readers, or your dictionaries, and you collect them in your shelf, and then you can open them up and they have many different attributes. Um, rather than showing you the video, I'm going to show you myself. Let's change over. Fingers crossed. You have the chance to see my daffodils. Oh, there you go. Wasn't bad. This, not this year, last year. Okay, what we have here is the Oxford Learners Bookshelf. Okay, and there, there, there you have my um, shelf. Okay, I've got English File, and I've got uh, a primary book there as well. If we open up English File, okay. it gives me the possibility of changing the format. If I tilt, in this format, I can make it double page. Okay, sign it over. So, what's better about that than paper? Well, firstly, you can... 1.2. You've got the audio is embedded, for example. Nothing too Hi. big at the moment. Hi, I'm Mike. What's your name? I'd make a loop. Sentence, and you can practice repeating that sentence, for example, you know, and then you can record yourself. So, we've got a recording facility. I'll we'll try that. So, Hannah. My word next one. So, Hannah. Okay, so I've got my own voice and I can compare. Again, if I find it a bit difficult, I'll right, get rid of that. Okay, I can speed it up. Really One, good. Three, two, four, five, six. Most likely, I'm going to have to slow it down. See you on Saturday. Not that much. Bye. Goodbye. Okay, so I've got the ability of 
increasing the speed, my own listenings, or, or reducing the speed, recording my own voice. Also, for example, So I can even do the activities in an interactive way. So I can even do, you know, here's true or false. True, false, true, false, true, false. And then I can, once I've done all the activities on the page, I can even correct them. So I've got a facility to correct my exercises. I can also, if I want, email the exercises to my teacher. What is the result of the correction? <coughs> This is the answer to the display the correction. Well, it doesn't actually give you the right answer because we don't want students to just see the answers and copy them, but it corrects their answers so they can keep on doing it until they get the right answers, basically. I'll, I'll show you, for example, um, in a short one, because this is an adult exercise, you have, have to do the whole page and it'll take you too long. But I'll show you in the child one, which is much quicker. Okay. Um, and also, it allows us to, allows us to actually search text as well. So there's one great advantage of a digital book, rather than you know, a paper book, if I'm looking for a certain section, I have to go through every single page. You know? Here I can just quickly look up you know, the, the entry, for example, um, New York, is that what I'm starting to write? And I get the exact point where New York appears, I click on it, and then it takes me to that section. Now, also, I have the ability to, and this, this is a demo, so I've only got five pages, so it's, it won't take me to page 67, because it doesn't exist here. But here, for example, I can actually ch choose the pages just by clicking on them. So some advantages, as well as the other things you can do with PDF, which is obviously writing on them. And the same sort of thing you know, for children. Where's my guitar? Okay, you've got the videos embedded. The stars are famous pop stars. I can still scroll so I can go. They've got a big concert so tonight. The full size. But Sam has got a problem. And the activity, for example. It's been a class book of have fewer activities that obviously than the activity book. But here's a short one for example. Who's got a wig? That's what John, for example. And who got a ponytail? I don't know the answer, so mm -hmm. we don't get it wrong. Sally, yeah. and then I can correct them and I see I've got them all wrong, for example. Okay, so I have to do it again. No, no. <coughs> There we go. Now, well, how are we doing for time? Well, actually, this is where it's here. here. Okay, great. No, you, you can show it. Uh, just yet another example, if you want. We can. Okay. Rather than show you any more, then I just I just quickly finish up. Just to say as well, you can also change this, collaborate with. As a school, as well, if you want to have a hand in making your own books uh, with things like the iBooks author, um, which enables you to create your own books for your schools. Again, you might want to supplement materials that you had you know, in your classrooms. You might want to do both. So it's, again, a great way to experiment. Um, we've created a book with Headway, just available for iBooks, which you can download as well yourselves, and you can download a sample to have a look at it to see how it works, give a good idea you know, of what you can actually achieve you know, from using the iBooks author software. Um, for readers as well, what we're looking at readers is the ability to create readers with augmented reality, 
Um, this was a video, I'm not going to put it on, but it's a video of, of the Sony PlayStation. Now they are experts in that field, you know, of creating animations and things. But again, if you see this video, you'll see that children are fascinated, enjoying themselves. But then my question is, where's the reading? You know? um, I've experienced my own children as well, when they're using books they got for, the, you know, for apps, and um, when there's a lot of animation, they don't read anything. They just play the games and they swap the page and play the next game. And again, really what you have to look at, you know, it may, maybe it's fascinating to actually um, dabble in this field, but you really need that right combination. And I don't think you need to have too much going on, because you need to focus on what you need to focus on. And again, you need to make sure that reading is taking place in something that we're looking at at the moment, not to distract the students, to motivate the students, but not distract them. Another one you might want to look at uh, that we've got um, is Potato Pals. Um, that came about through collaboration with uh, a company, I believe, uh, Vietnam. Um, and it allows you to, as you're holding up the, the actual iPad, the tablet, you can see yourself in the screen and your face transforms into the figures. And you, re you can record it, you copy the text, in the morning I wake up, and you can actually then make it into a movie and it creates the movie of your reading. So again, it's a, it's a way to ensure you're reading. So you're actually reading, you have to read the text, otherwise you can't record it. It's, it's really engaging the students because it's a fun way to do it. I have fun. Anyway. And again, we create content as well, not only for books, but also for students to go into the websites themselves, extra practice and things, what we call the online learning zone. And again, it has to be a fun place, it has to be attractive for them. So the way we do it is we split into two. We make a fun content to make students keep coming back, and then we split it up with another side, which I'm not going to say it's not fun, but it's actually just to practice what they do at school. So it's an area for, for revision, uh, and then the other side, another area just for fun, and playing games like video games and things in English. So again, that's what we, the sort of things that we're doing, okay? And just to finish off with, um, and the, the desk outside in Oxford, there's some, some flyers if you're, if you're interested where you can just get a free trial of some of the e-books for the Oxford Learners Bookshelf and you can have a look um, at different things on there, the interactivity that we're looking at on my iPad. So there I think you've got English File, um, which is obviously used mainly in, in the School of Fithialis, universities, um, Solutions, which is quite a high level course for secondary schools, uh, Incredible English, which is a high level course for primary schools, and again, you've got a few other readers, Classic Tales, um, Really Discover, which is like sort of kill based readers, uh, and Bookworms collections of dinosaurs and Dracula. Okay, so you're more than welcome to collect one of the sheets and try it out for yourself if you have uh, a tablet. It works on either Android or on um, Apple. Okay? That's it. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Uh, I have heard some people uh, talking a little bit and commenting, so maybe you, it's the time for you to express that in loud voice. They were women, I know that. The voices were coming from all there. Um, 
for the first sort of projects in Catalonia, um, um, which is like the one by one project they had. There was like one computer for every child, and that was one of the first ones that started at the beginning through a website called Virtus Books. Most people just use these big PDFs, and there weren't just one PDF per page. It was like imagine me getting a book and taking every page and putting it on the floor into a big, big square. That's what it looked like. So it was like a big PDF, and the way to look at it was like moving across the pages coming down. It was terrible. It took about an hour to load properly, and obviously imagining all students, 1,200 students in a school, all connecting at the same time with that huge amount of memory was impossible, so most people could not use them. So we were very aware of that. So for the web books, that's why we didn't want book and screen. We just wanted HTML activities. So using the same programming as you would use for a website. You know, it was very light, you know, not too many images, very much reduced images. That's what we first did. Now we're going back to book and screen, we're getting the very light, low res um, images of the book, because we're not using the book to do the activities. We're using the book as a reference for students to know what activity to do. So the teacher can go, look, this one here is the reference. But once you enter into the activity, you're going back to HTML. So in fact, they are very fast. They don't require much of a connection. But anyway, even if you have no connection, or very little connection, that's why we've now got the thing called Oxford Plus Offline, which is like a program for computers or for tablets, which enables you to download that content and work offline. So you can work constantly offline, so it's just as fast as working off a program on your computer. The only time you need to connect is if you're using the gradebook, just to synchronize. So it's now, there's no excuse, you know, so the internet connection is not a problem anymore. So that enables you to work you know, at, at, at top speed. The, the books for the iPad are showing um, before are totally offline. But apart from that, uh, each student has a possibility to do that uh, in their own in, at home. Yeah. So they have the, the picture book and the, the online, well, offline or online version as well? No, I mean, normally a blended solution might be um, book in paper and workbook uh, online, for example. It doesn't make a lot of sense to have both paper and digital with the same content. You could, but again, it doesn't make, it's not really taking advantage because you're duplicating the material. Some, 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 some people do, they, they have the paper one, and as an extra option, we'll also have the digital one, you know. So basically you're buying, you know, the, um, the content ones, but two formats, you know. So, that, so, so we reflect the price if that's what you're doing on that as well. So you're not buying two lots of content, it's the same content, but in the, one is a paper format, one is a digital format. But again, you know, really what we find most people do is either, you know, have one paper element and a different digital element. You know. If you're going to use the workbook and paper, then maybe the option would be to, for example, the thing I showed for English file, which was the online skills program, which is an extra option on top of that to complement the book. But do you think there's a need to do the same content on paper and the same content digitally? Yeah? It depends. For example, I see that for young children, for primary, even secondary, digital <coughs> teenagers or digital kids, but I don't see that with others because they want paper because you know, they, they you see everything on the screen all the time, too uncomfortable for them. Yeah. That's my opinion. Um, no, definitely that with the way at the moment because. The digital market at the moment is probably about four percent of the entire paper market, so it's still quite small. So, but things are changing. <laughs> Over there, is it time for a question? Yeah, sure. sure. Uh, how how well do your apps play together? How well do they together? For example, if I'm using one of your, if I bought one of your books and I bought the Oxford to Learn this dictionary. Depends on the on the format of the app. So some of the apps have the dictionary integrated into them anyway, so you wouldn't need both apps. That's true. It depends on the level as well. So if you have a secondary book has a dictionary incorporated into it, but it's not going to be sort of, you know, the, 
um, the advanced learner's dictionary because it's at a lower level. So we do actually, have, so there would really be no need to have both uh, at the same time. Uh, uh, Thank you. 
I mean, obviously, within a thousand years for sure, there would be no paper probably, but you know, within a short time, um, as you say, you're talking about digital natives, so when today's digital natives you know, uh, are at universities, uh, which is almost you know, happening, um, then really, you, know, you, know, you can question whether you know whether they feel comfortable with paper, you know, uh, at all. I mean, definitely the sort of the, the adult market is very much sort of paper focused. But again, I think on the other hand as well, we sort of jumped into digital too quickly, and then we sort of realised, you know, unless it's actually beneficial, um, then you know, it's obviously it's, de it's detrimental. You know? So some of the sort of paper, uh, digital formats that you've seen are much worse. Than paper, so I think you've got to just think about what's the most um, most practical in a sort of in, in, a, in a sense. But I think for sure, um, some the time will come where there will be no no paper. But uh, you know, it's hard to say you know, when that will be. For example, you know, the sales of digital books in the world were decreased in 2013 compared to 2012. So in reality. You know, it's, maybe that's going to be such a, a slower process than maybe we think. But again, I think I think the, the most logical step at the moment is is a sort of blended uh, blended teaching and using digital and you know, and paper. But again, once paper stops being beneficial you know, and technology improves, and you sort of start questioning why am I using paper, um, then obviously you know, the transition will take place. But I have no idea when that will be. At the moment, still, we're still sort of ninety-five percent. Okay. Thank you very much for your attendance. Thank you very much for your questions. I hope you have you have enjoyed this presentation as much as I have done. And yeah, just remember that you, if you want to go to the eRail on the world, it is very important that you download the application because the guided tour is made by means of the application. You have all the details in your bags. And it is called Speak Apps. No, you speak, uh, well, I don't know, I don't, I don't remember. It's in your bags. There's one sheet of paper telling you how to do the visit to the walls. And it is a guided to by means of this application. So you should be there around half past seven. And then we will have the gala dinner at 9 o'clock, as I told you before. So, uh, thank you very much, and see you in a couple of minutes outside on the walls of Africa.